Uh, we've been doing a series called God With Us, and this is the Christmas Eve time for God, for God With Us. Um, so Merry Christmas. <laughs> Caught you by surprise. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> um, we've been anticipating this, right? The, the arrival of Jesus. They're getting close. Any of the kids in here ready for tomorrow? <laughs> Everybody's hand goes up. <laughs> well, we're glad that you're here with us tonight. We're glad that you could join us as we worship and celebrate together because Christmas is here and God is here with us. If you journey the past four weeks, you know that we've been celebrating and observing Advent, and that now on Christmas Eve, on the verge of the celebration of the arrival of Jesus so long ago, our Savior, the light of the world, the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God with us, it's, a, it's a kind of that tangible excitement begins, to, even for people who just turned 60. <sighs> I don't know who that might be. <laughs> But it fits because Advent is a season of waiting, expectant waiting. That's what we do. We're, we're uh, focused on, on Christ's coming, both that he came to earth so long ago, and so we celebrate that. But there's a second, and now for the rest of the story, he's, there's going to be a triumphant return when, when he comes back and, and, cha and, and changes everything for, for the good in, in this uh, great story of ours. Um, each week we focused on different aspects of God's character uh, embodied in the Works in life of Jesus, really. It's, uh, tell me what they are. Just off the top of your head. Hope. Joy. Peace. Love. <laughs> How'd you get that? <laughs> yeah, the, those four characters, characteristics of God are things that we celebrate in this season. You know, uh, long ago, the prophet Isaiah foretold the birth of the Messiah called Emmanuel. And, um, you know, Joseph probably didn't know all of these pro prophecy stuff. The, the Jewish people, they would go, they, they would learn the first, the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, but the, the prophets, and that was for the rabbis to, to do and, and to have. So Joseph may not have known, you know, what was going on, and, and, and Mary, probably, it's doubtful that she could read, or, you know, back in that day. So it's really interesting that, God tells them to, to name this child Emmanuel, and, and, uh, and, and they just, you know, they're probably going, why? You know, <laughs> so, you know, they didn't understand until later the significance of that. Um, Matthew shines a light on this, subject, uh, uh, on this subject in his account of the story. He says, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means... God with us. And this story is, really is a powerful story. Um, it's filled with wonder and miracles and real life is the thing. It's filled with the real life story of Christ, story of God with us. Jesus comes to earth, leaves heaven, comes to earth so that he could walk and, and, and provide a bridge for us to God. And as we've walked through various parts of the story over the past month, We've explored kind of the intersection of God with us in the lives of real people. Elizabeth and, and Zechariah and Simeon and, and Mary and Joseph. So, so we've looked at real people and kind of tried to get in their shoes a little bit because it's, you know, it, it was a different era and a different world. And, and sometimes it's hard to, you know, we, we see things from our point of view and it's hard to go that far back and go, well, wouldn't you just call them? Well, no, you can't just call them. Well, send them a text. Sorry, <laughs> you can't do that either. Well, certainly post it on Facebook, and that'll, no. <laughs> Those things that we take for granted here just didn't exist. But what we do know is that, that Jesus brought hope, love, joy, and peace into their lives in real ways and also into ours. Uh, four, four weeks ago, we started with hope. God with us brings hope. And Zechariah was the... Um, was, was serving in the temple. He was one of the, he had, he was one of the priests, and, and he was in there, and, and an angel came to him and said, you're going to have a baby. Now, that's not a, that wouldn't have been a big deal except to how old he was, you know? And, and so he's, it's kind of like the same Abraham and Sarah type of thing. They had wanted kids because kids was, were, was how your uh, lineage would continue, and, and by not having kids, they, they, they would lose some social status. It wasn't their fault. Scripture even tells us that. Um, 
so there was probably a sadness about them. And then an angel comes and tells Zechariah, and you're going to have a child. He didn't believe him. So he took away his ability to speak. And that, I love that because, you know, and I, love, I did this before. I, I love that he did that because, so you got Elizabeth at home. You got Zechariah just got told <laughs> you're going to have a baby. And he's got to get it that across to her. You know, can you imagine him walking in the door going, hey. <laughs> and, he, and just, I can't even imagine all the carrying on that went off to try to get across. We're going to have a baby. Wow. Yep, we are. <laughs> we love Charlie. <laughs> So that was the first week because there was such hope. They, they had lost hope, but their hope was restored, and they were able to have John the baptizer and, and, and also to provide a little bit later on some hope for Mary. And this Romans passage really is a prayer for us all in this season. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. It's one of those to grab hold of, and it's a blessing that, Paul spoke to, uh, to the church in, in Rome, but it's applicable to us as well. Uh, God with us also brings love. And we looked at Joseph and Mary a little bit differently than what normally do. I, I hadn't really considered this until this sermon series. Uh, but as a love story, you know. Now, Joseph had a good job, so uh, he would have been an a eligible bachelor. They, the, the dads would have been trying to hook up the... hook. Well, not hook up. That's probably the wrong terminology, um, but try to, uh, <laughs> uh, when you dig a hole, how do you get out? <laughs> uh, would, so, 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 so the dads, because the dads would arrange the marriage, they would have seen Joseph with a career and, and as a carpenter, he would, and, and they would have gone, this is a good guy for my daughter, and so that how the marriage would have been arranged would have been from family to family, you know, and and, uh, and in that period of time, Joseph and Mary would have been married, but not consummating that marriage, and they would have gotten to know each other. And, you know, I'm sure they had dreams and things that they wanted for their lives. And, um, and that was, you know, so, so, so they're, they're beginning to get to know each other, and, and then all of a sudden, Mary has this news for Joseph. I'm pregnant. You know, and then she comes up with some cockamamie story. An angel came to me and said, "You're gonna get, you're gonna be pregnant, but it's gonna be by the Holy Spirit." So that's what happened, Joseph. What do you think? <laughs> no, that's a tough one, isn't it? You know, you want to believe, but that's it. Feels like betrayal, right? Because you're getting to know the person that you're gonna spend your life with. Um, but fortunately, you know. It, Angel comes back to Joseph this time and explains that Mary is telling the truth and that they are uh, a big part of the redemption story for us. And God with us, Jesus with us, is love for and within and through us. See, the love of God is a miraculous thing. It's a miraculous, transformative force. You know, it's just, it's, it's amazing what happens when we encounter the living God. You've heard me say it a lot, and I absolutely believe this, is that when you encounter the living God, you cannot help but be changed. God's touch is that powerful. Um, there's a cartoon guy, and then Jim Carrey did it, uh, who experienced it. Maybe not God's touch, but it's kind of like this, right? So his heart's really small, and he's mean. He's, You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch, right? Um, Love changes all of that. And his heart grew three sizes that day, you know? And that's what, that's what can happen when love becomes a primary in our life. You know, as a church, you know what we're supposed to be known by? How we love one another, you know? Sometimes, and so we're human, right? So sometimes we don't always hit that home run with that, but it's our target. You know, and I'm a firm believer that if we get that right one day, if we get that love each other thing right one day, man, things are going to be different. You know, because we'll be different. Because the world isn't all about loving one another. The world is about getting what you want when you want it. 
And that's our role. We, we are to love one another, but we're, we're, we're carriers of love. You know, we, we're to bring it with us everywhere we go. Bear that love. In Christmas, it seems like it's easy and people are nicer. Or used to, anyway. It's, I don't know about now. I was down at the mall the other day. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, that's not true. Somebody let me in the line, so that was all right. Um, you know, but then it ends, and we kind of go back to being the same. What if we just took that, that spirit and tried to carry that forward? Love, peace, hope, joy into our 2021, because we need 2020 to go ahead and get over with so that we can be on our way. And we can start that at home. We can start that with those closest to us, those uh, who tend to annoy us the most, right? Our families, our spouses, our um, kids, the, you know, those, those folks that we're around all the time. It's not really that they annoy us, it's just proximity, you know? So uh, start in that place and then let that love go further. Expand it to our jobs. Love the people at your job. Love the people in your school. And then maybe we'll love, our, love strangers. Wouldn't that be something? And then at some point, it might be that we might get real Jesus-y and love our enemies. You know, anybody tired of political ads? Never mind. <laughs> you know, it, it's just, it's overwhelming. And, you know, it, I, I, at least, I don't know, I was going to say it might be 90% of them are just mean-spirited, angry, they're horrible. The other side, it doesn't matter which side you're on, the other side is horrible, you know, and gosh, if, if we could find a way to love our enemies, it might, it just, you know, I think things would change. Maybe that joy that he gives to us would come. Does anybody know why the candle's pink? <laughs> I forgot, and I keep meaning to look it up, but I haven't. Andy, you don't know either? Sorry, never mind. Don't want to put him on the spot. <laughs> Joy. <laughs> I like that. That's why I don't remember. <laughs> God with us brings joy, you know. And when Mary came to see Elizabeth, you remember that story? Mary came to see Elizabeth. And joy erupted in Elizabeth because John the Baptist kind of started freaking out inside of her. And, and she told Mary, she said, as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Elizabeth's joy was contagious. It was fill, filled Mary. And then, and, and then she had, you know, just kind of grabbed hold and claimed it, you know, with, with strength and and, 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 and a, just an understanding, she got confident. She couldn't have, I mean, she was left Joseph. They were having trouble to go to see Elizabeth. You know, sometimes the backstories are hard to, you know, she was, if, when she left, she couldn't have been in a very good spot. Joseph was talking about divorcing her, putting her away quietly. She, her whole reputation would have been ruined. And back then, a woman with that reputation would not have been able probably to marry again, or do, it, it was different. And yet when she gets there, Elizabeth's joy transformed Mary, and that's just the way that it works, right? I, I use puppies as an illustration in boxes on, on, that, on that Sunday. Because if you give a puppy to somebody and you try to put it in a box, how's that go? <laughs> Not well, right? It wants out. It wants out because they're so filled with energy, and, and then they get out, and then what happens? Everybody goes, huh, it's a puppy, you know, yeah, you know, and joy just overflows. Joy is amazing. And, and what if our lives were rooted in such a way that that's, that's the way it went with us. We, we saw the good and, and, we, and we're like, I'm excited to be, a, to be a Christian in this world of ours because the world needs more of us. Needs more of us to be able to, to just go in and, and not worry about all the junk and, and, and love people and help folks to, to see the God in us. Peter described it as inexpressible and glorious. Inexpressible and glorious. Though you've not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. It can't put words to it. It's just that 
Any of y'all ever had that where you had to tell somebody something? You know, it, it, you couldn't keep it inside. It was impossible. You know, that's the joy that we're talking about. It's deep. It's rooted in the Savior. It, it, you know, he came, he lived, he died, he rose, you know, and, and he's going to come back to complete his work. And, but this is his joy, the joy that no one will take away. Nobody will take it away. Read that for me. How about that promise? You know, he's talking to his disciples, and they're still confused because he did confusing things to them all the time. You know, um, but he's telling them, look, I'm, I'm going to go. You're going to have grief. But guess what? Guess what? I'm going to see you again. And what, is it, what are they going to do? Rejoice. And if it was Paul, he'd say, I'll say it again. Rejoice. They were going to rejoice, and nobody can take it away. Oh, gosh, we should do uh, old church choir. <laughs> Nobody will take it away. It's incredible to have that kind of joy. And then we talked about peace, which is not just the absence of conflict. It's, it's shalom. It's a holistic kind of peace. It holds us even when the circumstances around us kind of sucky, you know, when things aren't, aren't going really well and, and we're not sure how it's going to go. We can still have this peace that passes all understanding that Paul writes about in Philippians chapter 4. Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And what happens? If you do that, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This is a if-you-do-then passage of Scripture. You want to know how to have peace? Do the first part. Do the first part. I'm, I'm a recovering person. I think most everybody knows that. One of the things that my sponsor, my first sponsor, told me was... You know, if, if, if there's somebody that, that you're upset with or, or you know, had a bad, re- bad relationship with or, you know, whatever it was, he said, pray for, pray for them for two weeks every day, all the things that you want for yourself. But pray it for them. Whether you mean it or not at first, but, but at, pray that. And an amazing thing happens. Happened for me, for sure. Is that I began to see things differently. You know? Prayer changes, well, it changes us, really. It may not change the circumstance, but it changes our heart and can change others' hearts as God works through it. But he brings us peace that passes understanding. It's a wholeness of shalom that we celebrate. And here at Christmas Eve together, we get to rest in that peace. <laughs> and we get to carry it with us everywhere we go. And then we get to tonight. God with us is Jesus. And when we light the candles, we get to light the center one this time. That's the Christ candle. And then we're going to share the flame. All lit from the center candle. I love that part of this. I didn't know that for a long time. I didn't, didn't notice it, you know, that, that every, you, you didn't light it from the other ones, you know, because the ushers would would just light that and then light each other's. But the, the origin is the Christ candle so that we might let our light shine and let God do with us whatever it is that he would have us to do. Luke chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Isn't that supposed to be swaddling clothes? Anybody know what swaddling is? <laughs> but I want to flag something in this. You know, there is no guest room available for Jesus. You know, in our world today, you know, one of the things that's missing is room. We don't have a lot of margin in our lives. Our lives are so overwhelmed and busy. And I think that's not from, I don't think that's God's choice. Because we don't have room for Jesus in our lives. And if we don't have room for for him, then things aren't going to go the way that, you know, God would have them to go. We have to create margin and create room for him. 
And there's a lot of folks that, that aren't even concerned about it, right? Because they're living their life and doing their thing. But I, I, I just, that struck me this year that no room for Jesus is common. No room for Jesus is common. And if we're not careful, then any of us can get sucked into the doing and lose, our, lose, lose that connection. So just create room, I guess is what I'm trying to say. The Messiah came into the world in a very humble way. He came as a human, infant, poor, vulnerable. He was physically dependent on Joseph and Mary. God with us as one of us. And I love that too because God understands what we go through. I know sometimes we throw out the where are you, God? And uh, he's with you. Is, what's go- is where he is. But him coming is a miracle. And the miraculous announcements and events surrounding his birth were quiet and personal at first. Even controversial in appearance for Mary and Joseph, of course. And then who shows up? The Pharisees and the said, no. The shepherds, the, the outcasts, and then a group of Gentile magi. And I love that, that this is an example of what God was after. This connect, breaking down of barriers and walls. That first Christmas was probably the first time in Jewish history that the same kind of level of importance, the Jewish shepherds had a place, but so did the Gentile magi. God tore down a wall because it used to be Jews were chosen, and everybody else was unchosen. At the birth of Christ, that changed. And then he grabbed Paul, and Paul gave us most of our theology in pointing out that we are neither neither slave nor free, male or female. We are to be united. Christ came for so much. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. He's the fulfillment of all hope. He's the embodiment of love and the source of joy. He is our peace who has broken down every wall. And because he came, we can be with God authentically, honestly, wholly, and eternally. In John 10.10, it tells us about Jesus that he is the giver of life. See, the thief comes to take it away. But Jesus came to give us life and give it abundantly. Now, I like to think that that was going to be a lot of money, but that wasn't the way it worked for me. But there's a lot of ways to look at abundance. You know, and God blesses each of us in different ways, and we get in trouble when we do the comparison thing. You know, because I am a blessed guy. And I can find those blessings in my life when I look instead of comparing myself to, well, I don't have what they have kind of thing. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through him, John 14, 6. And in Revelation, he is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, who is and was and who was and is to come again. Man, I look forward to that day. That's going to be awesome. Paul captured a kind of a snapshot of the life that we have in Christ when he wrote in Romans Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into the place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. And we can rejoice even when we run into problems and trials and tribulations and hard things, for we know that they help develop endurance, and endurance develops character. Character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he sent his son, right? He's given us the Holy Spirit as well to fill our hearts with love. It's a beautiful description of the life brought to us by Christ. And tonight on the eve of Christmas. I hope that we can be like those shepherds long ago. They were scared a little bit by an angel and a heavenly host, but 
They did what was asked of them and went and they found the Savior. So if you're ever scared by something God is asking you, it's always been that way. From Moses to, to me, you know, I, didn't, I didn't, never would have thought I'd end up doing what I did. It's okay. It's okay. Take the step, though. Continue the journey. And we're going to close in a very special way. The end of, end of this series is a passage of Scripture out of Luke chapter 2, verses 10 through 14. And I think our APC kids got it covered. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? And there were, in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all people. To you is born on this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ in the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling with clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth and goodwill toward men.